So a massive welcome to the power of networks, as you can see on screen here, hosted by our guest speaker, Heather White. Um, Heather's joining us here, giving us a little wave. Tonight, we will be joined by leading experts within the field, along with, of course, members of investing team to really break down those essential skills needed to begin effectively networking. So just for a bit of background, the power of networks is part of our Success Beyond Schools series, where we'll be holding free regular webinars throughout this year directly for you, our parents. We kicked off actually last week with Dr. Manik Kohli, and I recognize actually a number of you joining again tonight, which is so great to see. Our next parent event will be chosen directly by you all. So please do fill out the short feedback form at the end of this event. Now, for those who haven't met me uh, before, who didn't join us last week, my name is Emily Sheardown, and I'm one of our student experience managers here at Investin. And I'm blown away by how many of you have joined us tonight, as well as those who have joined again from last week. And we also have plenty of the team in the background. So we have Ben, we have Chloe and Alicia who will be working behind the scenes to ensure that everything goes as smooth as possible. And like I said before, and I think I mentioned this just in my intro, it's so great to see that I can see actually thousands of parents have joined us uh, from all over the world. And we'd be coming to you directly to see for your essential insights today. So for those of you who haven't heard of investing before um, and those who are, you know, a little bit less familiar, I know there will absolutely be people who have heard of us. But we were founded in 2012 with the main aim of bridging that gap between school and industry. Now, we provided immersive career experiences of a student's dream career uh, before they've even gone off to university. And we cover a total of 20 different career areas and that's always growing. And this is so that students can start to make the right decisions about their career right now. Now we create experiences like this, led by top professionals as we're joined by Heather today and of course our lovely panelists as well, so that young people can find out what a career is actually like, meet professionals, network with them as our topic is today, within those industries and receive career coaching on how to break into some of the most competitive industries. Now, as I mentioned before, there are several key areas that we cover on our programs. Skills, as we covered last week, the essential skills that employees are really looking for. Networking, which is absolutely what this webinar is all about. And Heather will really greatly kind of take us through that tonight. Um, the psychology of network and, and how we can really support our children right now. We also cover on our programs experience, um, and that's a big part of who we are. It's compulsory no matter what career you go into, but often very difficult to find. Advantage, so learning about the science of that recruitment and how to really stand out. And finally, knowledge, what you need to know and how you can effectively talk about that. Now, we've worked with 45,000 students from over 100 countries, um, and we've worked with uh, students from 4,000 uh, 4, students' uh, schools there. And as you can see on screen, we're proud to see that we have a 4.9 out of 5 on Trustpilot from over 1,000 students. To us, it is so important that as many students as possible can start to think about their dream career right now. So again, to give you a little bit of flavor about what our programs are actually about, I've included a little video here.
So hopefully that gave you a little bit of flavor about who we are. But of course, we'll be exploring that in more detail later tonight. Now, as I mentioned, experience is one of the fundamental parts about investing. Um, and tonight is absolutely throughout tonight's event. Um, as you can see on screen, we will be using the hashtag network. So we will be using it for um, a number of different areas, which I'll break down for you now. So here on slido.com, and if you can go there on either a device, a phone, or whatever you're using to view this webinar, uh, we'll be coming to you live for our Q&A questions. In addition to this, we'll be having live polls throughout tonight's event. So if you have any questions or you want to participate in those polls, we'll go to those. Now, in addition to this, we will be coming to you guys directly live tonight. So we'll be using our hands up feature. So what I'm gonna do is I'd love to get you guys to raise your hands right now. So if you go to the participants tab on Zoom and there should be a raise hands feature. So if everybody could raise their hands right now and I'll see from Chloe who was our tech team tonight. Amazing, I can see thousands of hands up. Um, that's amazing to see and thank you for helping us to create an immersive experience with, with getting involved there. Amazing, so we're gonna lower those now. Now for tonight, as I said, we're going to be launching our first poll. So if everybody could go to slido.com and enter the code hashtag network, you should be able to participate in our first survey tonight. So we want to know what career path is your child interested in? That's slido.com with the hashtag network. Wow, amazing. So medicine is clearly a, uh, a big leader here, but we've got architecture, the arts, zoology, game design, film studies. Wow. Okay, that is incredible to see. Um, well, clearly we've got a lot of different areas to cover. Um, and Heather, like I said, will be really breaking those down within those and, and kind of making it of use um, to students and parents from all careers. So Chloe, if we, if we close that now, perfect. So thank you again for participating in that and we will absolutely be coming to you uh, throughout the whole of this event for more. So what I want to do before we jump over to Heather is why are we here this evening? So before the pandemic, when asked what is networking, I'm pretty sure everybody would have pictured those crowded rooms, shaking hands with people you don't know, and possibly exchanging business cards. Globally, networking event planners were putting on more than 5,000 meetings a day within the UK. And in March of last year, this stopped overnight. Comparing the current landscape to one year ago, it is vastly different for graduates and school leavers. In addition to this, it was reported that only 40% of jobs are advertised and that someone could expect to earn 6% more if they were recruited on the back of a referral from someone in their professional network. Now, with this in mind, building networks is essential. Now, throughout the pandemic, two thirds of students have reported it to be more difficult to find work experience placements and opportunities to connect with like-minded students. However, this is certainly doesn't mean that experience and a supportive network are no longer required. In fact, quite the opposite. With job cuts around the country and school leavers and graduates continuing to enter the workplace, competition for jobs is fierce. In fact, Forbes recently noted that on average, currently 118 people apply for any given job. But this is not a time to despair. As you can see, adaption on there, we've got at the end. COVID-19 has created a unique opportunity for our children to get ahead. The shift to a digital world was created a unique opportunity for our children, making networking more accessible than ever. As James West said, online networking is no longer a gimmick or stopgap. It has fundamentally changed how people connect, 
collaborate and build their businesses. A new world of online networking is evolving with a chance for our children to reach out and build connections from day one without even leaving their home. And this is exactly what we're doing tonight as well. So with that segue uh, into tonight's topic of network, I think it's due time to introduce tonight's speaker, Heather White, and I can see that she's joined us on screen here now. So Heather will be breaking down what networking actually means, the psychology behind it, and what we can be doing right now to support our children's growth. Now in 2001, Heather started Smart Networking, which specializes in training people in the skills and strategies of how to be effective at networking and developing their personal brand by accident. Since then, Heather has worked with more than 30,000 people from across the world and at levels from students to CEOs. So in a, just a moment, I'll be handing over to Heather uh, for her talk. But just before um, we, we move on, I'm just gonna introduce tonight's panelists. So at 7.30, we will be moving on to our Q&A panel, which is essential to all of our programs. Um, so please do put in your questions to our professionals um, throughout this event and the slider code will be on there throughout. So should you have any questions, just pop that in there. So that's the hashtag network. So without further ado, Heather, I'd love to hand over to you. Thanks ever so much indeed, Emily. And um, hello everyone. It's an absolute delight to be here tonight. Um, I must admit, I've got to sort of say, I've been working with that uh, investing for just a short period of time and they are an absolutely awesome bunch, so professional. Um, I'm just blown away by them. So I hope that you guys get the chance to work with them as well because they are absolutely awesome. Now, what I want to do tonight is to run this session more like a train the trainer or coach the coachy type sort of approach because as parents um, of this, you know, of, of your, well, as parents as your children, <laughs> so as parents, it's important that, you know, you instill in them the skills and the um, knowledge and everything else that you've gained over the years since you've been in the corporate world. However, what I want to look at is around how you coach, how you go about coaching um, with your young people, how to go about doing this whole thing called networking. So I want to start off with the Slido, which is, and I'd like you to put in, how confident are you? How do you feel about networking? So I'd like you to do is to share with me your own perspective, your own views about how do you feel about this stuff. I find the subject of networking fascinating. I've been doing this for over 20 years, as Emily said, and it's never, ever stopped being interesting. I work with all of these senior executives and it's so surprising that when I'm working with a chief exec of some large organization who sneaks up to me and says, Heather, you know, I really don't like this stuff. I'm really not confident at doing it. Tell me what I should be doing. So um, I wanted to find out, first of all, how do you guys feel? So actually, this is not bad, actually, is it? We've got, um, about, well, 11% of you guys are feeling not, uh, sorry, feeling very confident. So that's, you know, that's a small percentage, isn't it? Where we've got the other percentages, you know, we've got 17% not confident at all. And then there's a whole bundle of you in, actually in the middle. Now this is quite normal, where you've got then the, the, uh, the extreme levels, which is not very confident and very confident. Uh, and then you've got a whole bundle in between. And this is gonna represent your children as well as to how they feel about this subject. Thanks very much, we've, we've gone on to the next slide. So what I wanna position this off to start off with is in order to help you to help your children, we have gotta look at, a little bit around you. So I'm always keen to find out how do you feel about the subject? What's your mindset about it? You know, there are people who sort of see networking as being this horrible nepotistic thing. And there are others who think it's the most delightful thing in the world. So however you feel about the subject of networking, the doing of networking, then quite often you can pass that on to your children as well. So mindset and your feelings, your attitude towards it will actually sort of kick in quite a lot. Likewise, authenticity, which is absolutely critical. So we want people to be able to feel that this is right for them. Whenever I'm working and coaching with my MBA students and, uh, and uh, some of the other schools I've worked with, authenticity comes up so much. So I want people to be their natural self. 
So that natural self could be um, that you're shy, shy and introverted, but that won't stop you from being good at networking. So I'm all about how do we help the authenticity of the person to do well at networking and all the other skill, all the other bits that drops into place, like the strategies and everything else that will drop into place once people go, I can be myself. So what I'm thinking here is that how do you help your child to be themselves when it comes to this whole networking stuff? So the bit that um, also comes up quite a lot is what are the benefits and what are the barriers? So the next bit I want to do is I want you back onto Slido if you wouldn't mind. Um, and the next question is this one is what barriers do you face? So what I'd like you to do is to type in any words that describes what barriers you actually face in your profession, or if you want to even remember when you were younger, what barriers did you face when you were at university or when you started going to school? So that would be really interesting to have a look at. Now, whilst we're putting that in, uh, that's confidence, you see, that's an important thing. Um, lack of confidence, shyness, yeah, absolutely. Anxiety, depression, racism, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had a lot of. Um, uh, sexism, if you like, being a, a female at the time and trying to find my way in the corporate world. I get that one completely. Uh, Self-belief, that comes in quite a lot um, as well in terms of people having a view about themselves. You know, what is my worth to somebody else and what's my value and why would someone want to, who is more senior than me want to talk to me? So as we can see, confidence is one of those big things that comes out of this. And what I'm looking at here is by you understanding your own barriers, it helps us to coach whoever we're working with, whether or not it's a colleague at work or your child. If you bear in mind what this looks like for you, this will be, excuse me, just the same for those that you're working with and your children. Now, I know that one of my biggest barriers when I used to go to the networking events, those were the days, um, but we'll get back there. So when I used to go to networking events, um, when I first came to London, my biggest barrier was tall men in suits who were really composed. You know, because I'm little, you can't see it actually on screen, but I'm a little person. So anyway, so what happens is I'd go into this event and there'd be this great big tall bloke and he would look down on me. And I used to feel like this little girl. So it was a big barrier. So I had to learn to find my way around that. But once I understood, what barriers were stopping me. The one I used to do is set myself objectives that says, right, okay, if I lack confidence, then what can I do to make myself feel more confident? Thank you. If we go on to the next slide, that'd be great. Now, when we look at the differences then between barriers, you know, the things that we are facing, we then need to look at what are the benefits. And the benefits of networking are just extraordinary. So one of the things I'm doing, and one of the things you could consider when you're working with your children, is find out what the things worries them, and then look at what other benefits. You've got this lovely flip side, it's absolutely lovely. So I'm looking at, and funny enough, actually confidence is one of those first things, is that networking will take you outside of your comfort zone, and it will help to build your confidence. Personal development from a network perspective is quite extraordinary. And one of the things you want to think about is how do you coach your child to take some small, tiny steps of doing something that would help break down those barriers and that will give them the confidence. So what we're looking for here is the benefits. So what will they learn? The knowledge, you know, the support groups that they're going to find or develop around them, gaining more credibility, giving them more status and a sense of value, raise their profile, the connections. I mean, I could talk for hours just on making connections and the beauty and the dynamic stuff that you get as a result of building up connections and the knowledge and oh, it's absolutely wonderful. I mean, I tell you, I, I'll give you a quick example, actually. I was out for a walk tonight around the village and um, I bumped into one of my neighbours, social distancing, naturally, and, uh, and I said to him, you know, hi, how are you doing? And he's going, got myself a new job. And I went, oh, really brilliant. And we quickly found out that what it was is that one of his contacts, one of his mates, rang him up and said, look, there's a job going at my place at the moment. I think you'd be absolutely ideal for it. So he applied for it, had the interview as normal, and then he's got himself the job. I mean, that's how simple it is, isn't it? It's 
knowing the right types of people, building up that trust, that relationship. But most importantly, is that the networks know who you are. So, you know, there's that lovely quote, isn't it, that says, uh, it's not who you know, but who knows you. You know, to me, that is really important. So sell to them, find out the barriers, and then find out and, and help them to discover what the benefits are. Next slide, please. Now, one of the key questions at, um, at any stage of our careers is to look at what networks could we be developing? So once we get past the barriers, once we get into the benefits, and sometimes it's, you know, it depends on which way around it is. One of the great things here is actually to look at the breadth and the depth of the types of networks we could all build. And what I know for sure is that, you know, especially that younger generation, social media, so as soon as they meet somebody, most will be jumping onto that to a platform that says, right, how do we connect up? So you're going to have a lot of peer networks, which are absolutely brilliant. So one of the things that you might want to start suggesting is how do they broaden those networks out and to help them to think about how do they go higher as well as going across their peer groups. Now we all know that when we lack confidence the last person we want to go and talk to is someone more senior. So if we can start them off younger thinking that everybody is approachable, the majority of people are anyway aren't they, if anybody is approachable as long as we've got um, sense of curiosity and interest, I, I want to be useful, as well as asking for something, <coughs> then that means that, that, you know, the world is their oyster. I love the way that, you know, this generation is going to transform the world through this international dynamic networking. It's going to be absolutely amazing. But it's about planting thoughts with people, isn't it? Saying, so have you connected up with your teacher and your profession, a professor? Have you connected up with that speaker that was on the other day. So it's just giving them that encouragement and permission to actually go about building this type of network. Next slide please. This is where my heart is. My heart is 100% at cultivating relationships. This is where the magic happens. Actually I'll tell you a little, little secret actually. It's, um, many many years ago when I first started the business my company was actually called, I'm being attacked by a fly, my company was called um, the magic of networking. I used to, uh, my partner was a magician, absolutely fantastic. And uh, so we used to call it that, but so I'm being, I am being attacked by a fly who's currently in front of the camera. <laughs> so cultivating relationships is the magic. So by having trusted relationships, as we all know, if you think about your own careers, having trusted relationships is critical, isn't it? So that's why this guy who was recommended from the village for this new job, the reason why his mate did it is because he trusts him, he respects him, he understands him. So this part here is then demonstrating to your children how you cultivate relationships. So we come back to not just the types of networks, but actually it's about the depth of the relationships. Now, to be honest, most of us are gonna have a thin layer of relationships and then we're going to have this deeper layer in terms of that trusted part. Now there's a lot of research out that would suggest that actually the superficial connections are probably and often more powerful than those deeper ones. So the idea is, is to have and develop some sort of an eclectic type network that has a wider range of um, um, different interactions with people across different acts. Uh, different professions and stuff that's where the real magic actually sort of comes in from it. so what we're looking for here is suggesting on have they stayed in touch how are they staying in touch um, maybe thinking about the value that they're going to bring to that relationship I always sort of think that no no one should negate that age is nothing to do with being valuable to somebody else we've just recently taken on an intern uh, it's my first time working with an intern recommended to me by one of my close contacts, understood my business, introduced me to this fantastic lady here, she is 22 years old. And um, no, I've never worked with a young person like that before. Crikey, have I learned so much stuff. And I've always believed that age is not, has anything to do with bringing value to somebody, it's attitude and willingness. And that's what you're trying to really coach within, uh, within your children as well. So how do they build up? The relationships it's by asking about um, how does this work, how does that work, so you build up the knowledge, but about thinking to themselves, 
what can I give back? And that can be in itself knowledge as well. So it's how do they stay in touch? And you want to start talking to them around frequency. Too often, we all know, would be too much. You know, once a year might be, <laughs> might be way too less. So it's trying to find a balance around, depending on the direction they're taking their career at that moment, what does that need to look like? Next slide, please. I want to come to this particular point. This is where, again, my heart is, is around the psychology behind this. So I've already sort of said that um, playing to your child's personality and character is absolutely vital. It's important to understand that obviously you and your child is different. If you are a natural outgoing person and they are a natural shy person, um, saying something like, um, well, you just go up and say hello. <laughs> For a shy person, it's almost like going, what, you want me to jump off the cliff? So what I'm looking for here is understanding around the personality of your child, whether or not are they a natural go finder or do they need a reason? If there are, if they need a reason, you know, they, they're, they're sort of thinking, well, why would I bother doing that? What's, what's the point? If they're that way inclined, then what you want to do is you want to attach to the reasons for network and a, um, a task and a, a reason. And that will then go, oh, OK, yeah, I get that. So what I'm looking for here is their personality, not yours, to help them to work through what is right for them. So if people are more task based, give them a reason. If they're more natural, then that's fine. Just, you just cut them loose and go, off you go. However, it's making sure that we've got a framework, which is building an eclectic network across a whole different range of uh, opportunities. Planting suggestions, as I've been sort of, uh, hopefully I've been doing enough of that within here. So little ways that we can do this um, by listing out for what their career ambitions are and then offering up some suggestions around, well, you could try this one or you could try this one, those sort of things. Okay, and of course, it's about embracing differences. One of the great things when I'm working with my MBA students from across the world is that I really do um, want them to be, to get into the international differences that we all have. You know, so it's not just about my personality, but it's about those different personalities from people from across the world, the different cultures that come along with it. That's the bit that to me is really, really important. And the more international people are, I think the better this whole world is going to be because we understand. So coaching your child to me is all around understanding their personal needs, their, their character, and then giving them some ideas around how and what would work for them. Okay, next slide, please. So it's all now about building this up. If you have your chat um, at this particular stage with your child about their career options and listen out for what are they interested in? Okay, then based on that next part, next slide bit. Press the next slide for me. Emily, that's it, well done. <laughs> Thank you, just a bit of taking a bit of sort of building up there. So right, now, so, are we, so first of all, we've got, what is your child interested in? And it doesn't have to be just their career, but other interests as well. Once we've got that, do your research to find out some bits and bobs, and then look for where are the connection? Who knows who? Now, this is when you can use your own um, connections, use your own LinkedIn in order to go and find these different types of interesting points um, and then reach out. I mean, I reach out all the time. I use LinkedIn all the time with people I've never met for in my entire life. And then I just sort of send them a connection, have a chat, see where it goes and have lots of Zoom coffees. So I hope this has given you just a few ideas on what you can do, but of course, Throw in your questions now because we've got a panel of fantastic experts who can be able to answer all of your questions. Thank you so much for that, Heather. That was incredibly, incredibly um, insightful for um, exactly how we can be. Thank you so much for that. And just seeing on the reaction from our parents, um, they've been loving it so far. Um, thank you so much. So just before we go on to our panel Q&A, we're just going to uh, give you a little bit of insight into you know, what could be the next step for your child uh, right now. 
So as I said, I'm so thankful that you're all here tonight. Um, it's been wonderful hearing all about, you know, uh, Heather's experience here. And we'll certainly be holding more events like this in the future. We'd really love how, to see how you found tonight. Um, and we'll certainly be doing the feedback poll, as I said, at the end of the day. So for all of you who are looking for, you know, the next stage um, and what could be the ultimate kind of work experience right now, this summer, we will have internships in the careers that you can see on screen. So 12 different careers. And these experiences are up to 10 days in length with the option, of course, to personalize your experience at UCL with our halls of residence with accommodation, meals and guardianship as well. We'll be holding two separate streams of internships for 12 to 14 year olds, as well as 15 to 18 year olds and your child will have the opportunity to work with professionals like Heather and like I said, with our panelists that you'll see later on on screen. So whether that be shadowing a doctor in a hospital, arguing a case in you know, the Supreme Court or entering Airbus facilities. Now, of course, we're living in a COVID world. So where does it fit in? We were able to run our summer internships last year with incredible feedback. We actually got a 9.2 out of 10 by each of our students. And as you can see on screen, we're so confident that this year will go ahead as planned with strict social distancing measures in place. That being said, places are extremely limited um, and we've had exceptional interest uh, over the past few months. We will, of course, also be running two day work experience programs in 20 different careers this spring and registration as well for those has opened. So if you have any questions at all, no matter how small, please do let us know and we'd love to answer that. So you can simply email us at info at investin.org and a member of the investing team will certainly get back to you. Now we are, of course, going to dive into our Q&A, our panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite our panelists to um, unmute themselves and um, start their videos. So we have Mary, we have James and we have Jenny and, of course, Heather on the top there. Perfect. And what I'm going to do is I'd love to invite you all to in introduce yourselves. So, James, I can see you top of my screen. So, James, um, I'd love to come to you first for an introduction. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's, it's great to be here. And I loved hearing Heather sharing some of the fantastic things that I know have helped me uh, build a network of over 10,000 people since I started. Uh, I graduated from the University of Birmingham and launched a company called Student Beans. And uh, looking forward to answering questions in, in today's panel. So thanks so much for having me. Amazing. Thanks for that, James. And Jenny, I can see you next on my screen. So please, we'll come over to you. Thanks, Emily. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jenny Smith. I'm a networking strategist and founder of a company called Networking Know Who. And like a lot of people here tonight, I am incredibly passionate about networking, about connecting people, what it can do for them and their businesses. And networking's like changed my career. I started out when I was still studying um, and it's led to loads of jobs. So I'm excited to share some stories and words of wisdom with all the parents tonight and I hope it helps. So yeah. Thanks for that introduction, Jenny. And Mary, I can see you next. So we'll come over to you. Brilliant, thank you. Um... Evening, everyone. Hope you're all well. Um, Mary and Bissamwa, nice to meet you all virtually, albeit, but I guess that's how we meet people now. Um, and similar to James, I went to the University of Birmingham, super passionate about networking and how it's helped me um, navigate my career and get opportunities that I guess only five years into my career journey that I've been able to get from trustee roles to designing my own role within my organization. So um, yeah, really excited for the dis discussion. Um, my day job is I work in management consulting um, and outside of work, I do careers blogging um, and run a side hustle, focus on um, helping young women navigate the corporate world and all the unwritten rules that comes with. So yeah, looking forward to the discussion. Thanks for that, Mary. So we um, have been having many questions come through live from our parents. So we'll kick off with the first one so we can get the ball rolling. So we're going to start with 
um, how does networking actually lead to a job? A little bit of a tricky one to start. And Heather, I'd love to come to you first. How does networking help you get a job? Exactly. Right. OK. Oh, my goodness. What a fantastic question. Right. then. so how does it help you get a job? Um, networking has it's multifaceted in what it actually does. So by you having relationships, people know who you are or they should know who you are. So part of what you're doing when you are building these conversations is that you're imparting onto them your expertise and what you do. So I'm an absolute stickler in um, saying to people, if I don't get you, I can't help you. And I know that sounds a little bit rough. I'm a connector as the other three guys are as well. We all want to be helpful, but I can only be helpful if I understand what you're about. And if you always remember that people, when they are looking for somebody to fill a role, they always go to expertise first and foremost. So they turn around and sort of say, do you know, I've got a problem at the moment and I need a." They always go to the hard skills, the expertise, then they go to the personality and the fit. So networking will always help you, providing your network knows what you're about, what your expertise is. And it's through those conversations that your name should get put into that conversation saying, well, I've got a problem I'm looking for. And someone says, oh, I know, Mary's just the right person for who I want. Mm -hmm. So yes. Yeah. Thanks for that, Heather. James, I can see that you might want to pop in here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just a brief story um, and relates to the underground. I was sitting on the underground and a guy came to sit next to me with a CV in his hand. And I just turned to him and said, look, are you looking for a job? He said yes. And he came to work for us. And um, look, I'm, I'm sharing this now in the context of not being on the underground, but there's context, right? I saw the CV. Had I not seen the CV, I wouldn't possibly have said anything. So if we then relate that to being online now on LinkedIn, they've got a feature saying open to work. And immediately you can use, if, if, if your children aren't on LinkedIn yet, I do recommend to get out there and put it on and add any accolades, any experiences. And I had talked about, you know, looking at experience first. And I know that's a catch 22 often with young people. Well, I don't have the experience and people are looking for internships with four years experience and that just doesn't work. So it's about leaning on things that you have done and taking the learnings from them and framing that in a way. But then also at the top of the profile saying, I'm this person, I'm passionate about these things. I'm looking for work experience in these areas. Do you know someone? And I'm being very vocal and open about that, just like the equivalent of me seeing the CV uh, in, in real life. So that's hopefully some tangible things to help you. Thanks for that, James. Um, I can see all of our panelists nodding along as well. So clearly some great answers. Um, I'd love to go on to our next one now, uh, which kind of leads on from, from what you both have been saying, which is how can I stand out uh, from those applications or in CVs and things like that um, as, as a child or as a parent there? Um, and Mary, I can see you nodding along. So I'd love to, to come over to you, please. Yeah, I think in terms of standing out, I think um, I like to think that everyone is unique and has different skills to bring. So I think it's almost just bringing that to life. And what I'm really excited about is that now having a portfolio career, whether it's like a day job and a side hustle or moving jobs every two years, I feel like that myth is now being kind of destabilized and people don't really believe in it anymore. So I'm really excited about people showcasing that they're multi-hyphenate, multi-passionate. You can be an accountant and do something else that makes you a bit more interesting. Um, and that's something I've really embraced in my career. And I feel like more organizations are doing that for the reasons that, yeah, really we want to work with people that we get on with. Um, not every day at work is always fun. So how can we make sure that we have people that we want to build relationships with, that we really get on with? So I think standing out is really showcasing the breadth of your skills and maybe um, some of the less, um, yeah, so thinking about things that are maybe outside the box that actually will help you showcase um, the skills that you have. So I know often with students, we talk about extracurricular activities. I think that kind of style stays with you in your career. What other things are you doing outside of your work or out on the side of your desk that make you a bit more interesting or give you um, a different skill set? And I think that continues to be really important. Mm -hmm. What a great answer. And I, I actually couldn't agree more uh, with what you said there, Mary, uh, particularly given how the world of work is changing and we do need to have more skills and showcase these and particularly those um, in-person skills as well, um, as well on relationship building, as you've mentioned there. So thank you. Now, can I, I, just, um, can I just add in actually, uh, Emily, because 
I, you can't under, underestimate the, the work that you guys are doing by people going on to some of your courses, the experience that they're going to get, that to me should just, coming back to what Mary was sort of saying, should just ping off the page, shouldn't it? In terms of, you know, when I, you know, I was um, doing a debate with a, a, a professional lawyer, you know, I mean, that to me is really, you know, I just love that because it's energy on curiosity and interest and I'm going to keep on pushing myself. But all of that is just absolutely brilliant. Amazing. Thanks for that, Heather. Oh, James, I can see yeah. you jumping in here. So I, I've, I've got a, a primed chocolate bar in my hand. So you think, how is this related? Well, you know, in terms of standing out, so many people I hear, I've applied on LinkedIn, and I've just clicked the button and applied for the job. And how I honestly think it's, I, I'm going to be brutal about this, nonsense, that someone's applied to 100 jobs and they haven't got a response. So they, maybe that's true because they just clicked the button and thought, oh, great, I'm going to get the job. And why I was holding a chocolate bar is, you know, from a very practical point of view, find a company, do your research, perhaps find someone that works there and send them in the post a chocolate bar saying, I've heard a whisper that you're recruiting or send a tea bag that says, why don't you have a cup of tea or send, it doesn't need to be what I'm showing you, but it's an example of, you know, how many people get something like this in the post and at least they'll, they'll engage with it. And I think it's interesting. On another panel I spoke around, um, someone sent postcards from all of the destinations when they were traveling around the world. Uh, and then they got a job with the advertising agency at the end of it. So it's don't copy, do something that means something to you. Um, student beans, every meeting we had, we took a big jar of jelly beans and left it at the end of the meeting. And still years later, people say to me, oh, I remember when you came in and so this happened. So think, be creative, but be authentic as Heather was saying as well. I love that, I love that. And that really brings in the individual there. And as Heather was saying, just focusing on what makes you authentic as an individual. Um, thank you all for those um, kind of varied responses there. Now, I'd love to know, I know that we are in a COVID world and we're getting quite a lot of questions about what can I be doing right now um, to network, you know, when in-person things aren't as familiar. And Jenny, I'd love to, to come over to you for this one. Yeah, so if there was ever a time to start networking, it can be now because this is the best time. Everyone is at their desks, listening prime ready there's no geographic barriers you could start connecting and attending events for free so i think it doesn't matter what age you are i started networking when i was still studying and i'm not gonna lie absolutely terrified the life out of me i hid for most of the event in the bathroom because i was that scared but plucked up the courage it took me a while and now i teach networking skills so if i can get over my fear anyone can so being digital is a massive opportunity for young people to be able to get in front of and have conversations with experts in their fields. There are so many online events happening that are free to attend that are, you know, look at the themes and the topics of these events that are going on and look at the speakers and, you know, find out, depending on what your kid's interested in, go to events that are on those topics. They will be so inspired. If you need to be with them, then that's fine. You can sit digitally, you know, contact the org organizer and say look you know especially if the if your child's under the age of 18 but they'd love to come and listen to this um this seminar and start networking and connecting with people who are living and working in the industries that they're interested in and um, so that they can find out about what it actually is and what the experience is like and start building these networks and I think the word networking kind of gives this shudder of fear to a lot of people when actually it's all just about nurturing relationships and our kids are already building relationships they've been doing it since they go to nursery since they start talking and um, we just give it this scary word and imagine all these like bacon sandwiches and glasses of wine getting thrown everywhere while people try and talk to strangers um but actually it's just about nurturing the relationships and if you can kind of encourage your your kids to start doing that now while everyone's you know at their desks it's a lot easier to get to get people to talk to them and they've got the whole world to start networking with so it's a great time um a great time for them to start thank you yeah. Oh, and sorry, I did actually is that one of the um in my in my 20 years of teaching networking skills one of the biggest questions is how do you break into a group so I've been sort of thinking through how does this work online okay so uh 
what I would be doing is exactly what Jenny just said, which is, you know, get yourself onto these different conference calls, etc. Now, obviously, tonight's not a brilliant example because, you know, I can't see anybody else. And, and when I go into the participants, I mean, I'd have to work pretty hard to sort of scroll through and find one person out of 1.4 thousand people, which is amazing. So um, obviously in the smaller ones. So what I would then be doing, I'd always have my video on because you are further up in the visual box. Always ask a question. So this is no different to if I was going to a networking event, I'd always ask a question and I would always be visible. Now visible would be either what you wear. So I've got my bright yellow thing on tonight. Uh, Jenny's got his beautiful lipstick on and um, you know, and James has got that stuff going on in the background. So as long as you've got something that brings visually something to you, then you're doing the same as like you're going into an event where you're wearing a bright outfit or something. So if you look at and how do you replicate work in a room? Questions, colour, background, um, you know, put the thing on. I, the amount of times I'm working with people, and, and I, you guys might will probably find this as well, you're on this conference call. And everyone's got their videos off. And I'm thinking, what's that about? Because how can you engage and build even on these, um, you know, body language is still important. You know, it's nuts, isn't it? Where people just sort of sitting there or they they just wander off somewhere. And you're thinking, what are you doing? So I, networking I, in that context, soft skill stuff is still really important. And you can raise your profile just by asking questions and so on and so forth. If, can I just say, if, if, young people aren't comfortable with attending like online events, you know, it might be a bit intimidating. There's things like engaging on Twitter. Um, so there's lots of Twitter hours where you can use a certain hashtag um, and then tweet at a certain time of day and then engage with other people that are doing the same thing, which is a kind of a bit of a softer introduction to digital networking. Whereas, cause obviously you're behind the screen, you don't have to, if they're not quite ready for that. So that could be like the first step into starting to connect with other people around the world who have got the same interests as them because that's where we build trust and obviously networking is a lot about building uh, trusted relationships so that people refer you and recommend you for jobs because they know that you'll do a good job um, and we, we like to build trust with people who think the same as we do because when we meet someone that thinks like us we think they're fantastic because we're fantastic so having things in common with people is a really great way for them to start networking so even like you know outside of um, online in person at school joining clubs and ex you know ex extracurricular activities Activities. It took me a while. Um, they're net that's networking. That's what they're doing. They're networking with people who have got the same interests of them outside of their classes and um, joining online groups and things like that. Again, another way for them to start networking, mm -hmm. building relationships with people who are outside of their immediate circle at school in their class, but have got something in common with them. And that's where things like, you know, investing and having these shared experiences help them build trust and um, going out and networking with their peers, but then also people in industry as well and creating that kind mm -hmm. of, that network from a young age. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for, for those answers. I think, I mean, it's so great to hear you almost bouncing off each other with, with those answers. Um, I mean, those are incredibly insightful. And just to, re to relate on your point there about, uh, particularly with, you know, what steps can I be taking if it just be a small one for now is one of my favorite parts about our programs actually is when a student joins who is a little bit shyer, perhaps it is their first time joining an online event or in person uh, within London on our internships. You know, at first they're a little bit withdrawn or, or they're just, you know, keeping to themselves. And Heather, as you say, um, they put in that first question or, you know, they ask, ask the person next to them, what's going on if we were in person? And we see throughout the whole day how their confidence has grown. And it's those little steps that you really do build up to um, that, that make, you know, um, make it seem easier and, you know, develop those networking skills. Um, absolutely. Can I add a little bit on that? Emily? Of course, Jenny. Sorry, yeah. I'll be quick, I promise. But, um, Heather was saying amazingly before about, you know, if you've got introverted or extroverted tendencies, then mm -hmm. that can really affect how you feel about networking. And for mm -hmm. young people, it's exactly the same. Um, but what I've found with working with people is that if you've got introverted tendencies, so if your child's not introverted naturally, they'll get their energy from being 
on their own and they'll mm. be more comfortable in smaller groups so one-to-ones tends to work a lot better for people mm. who are naturally introverted whereas extroverts like me love to be around a lot of people we like the big social networking kind of situations so depending on your child and um, knowing which way they you know they're more comfortable then there's networking situations that you could encourage them to go towards so if they are more extroverted they'll enjoy being around a lot of groups of people but if they're not and that you know neither's right nor wrong being introverted if they're a bit more um shy you would think I guess but being introverted then being in situations where it's more of a one-to-one um will help them come out of their shell a lot more and feel more relaxed and comfortable and then build their confidence up over time yeah. James, I can see you You have had couple, a little bit. A couple of quick things. Um, one, Clubhouse. I don't know if anyone else or anyone on the panel has been on already or experienced it. There are over 10 million people on there already. And it's a video, uh, voice social network. Um, and maybe parents, if you want to have a play first and you can see, but there's so many people on there willing to help and give advice. And um, I think it's definitely um, of, of its time. Uh, so Clubhouse, have a look at that. Um, the other thing is just in terms of building on what Heather said about asking questions, it's the most powerful thing to be able to ask a question and in the question, state your name, state what you're looking for. So for example, my name's James, I'm interested in getting into architecture and I'd love anyone's view on how best to do that. It means that everyone in the room then knows who you are, knows what you're looking for. And I've literally been at events where I've said I'm raising money for a new business. And because the audience then know me, they came to find me. And it wasn't necessarily the people on the panel or the question, but now everyone in the room knows who you are. And that might sound overwhelming and daunting, but one of the things is prepare the question before you go. So you've literally got it in. Um, and my team, I challenged all of them to do this. And it was an online, uh, people watching online. And someone said, is Student Beans sponsoring the event? Because every online session I see, someone from Student Beans put up their hand, says what we're doing, and asks a very specific open question that's beneficial for everyone, but then everyone still knows and hears about Student Beans. So hopefully, again, some very relevant, tangible actions uh, to, to set your kids on the way um, when, when they're at events. Definitely, definitely. Now, I know that there is just six minutes left. So what I would love to do is ask our audience for a question. So we're going to go live now. So what I'm going to ask people to do is to raise their hand if they have a question that they would love to ask our experts here. Um, Chloe, do we have one? We see some nodding. So if you can unmute yourself, we'd love to ask, um, have you answer your, ask your question. very tense <laughs> really building the suspense here oh, suspense. <laughs> let's try another person just while we're waiting for that just interrupt me if the person comes on but one of the things um that i did was tell you sales for bingo it sounds really random but i i call it no training instead of sales training because I had made 250 phone calls a day, got 700 no's every single day, but it built my resilience. And that's the thing from a networking, just keep going. It's like, what's the worst thing that can happen when people are at events? They want to meet other people. So it's like, that's what we're there for. And you know, an event and a framework is an opportunity to, to meet people. So that's what I would say just while we're waiting. Thanks. A really good, really good point actually, because people take it quite personal, understandably, when they get a rejection where someone's not interested in having that chat um you know they so quite often you know i might think james is like the most important person for me to talk to but james just looks at me and goes i don't want to talk to her because yeah, i have no relevance that. or don't no perceived <laughs> relevance and he rejects me you know and it and that can hurt quite deeply um and so i think james is absolutely right is actually how do you build up that resilience to say it's not a personal attack it's just simply at that particular moment, I was not relevant for that other person. So it's a good point. Oh, Giovanna, I can see that you've unmute yourself here. So we'll come to you next. Okay, uh, well, I can, I was, it's, it's my question it's, actually. It's my um, husband's question. <laughs> I was thinking tonight, there's, as you someone said, there's 1,400 people online, all with um, various skills, probably quite a lot of reasonably professional parents. Um, so my daughter, for example, wants to become a lawyer, but, um, my background and my wife's background is biology and biotech. Um, so I don't know whether there's an opportunity here to network amongst all the parents 
and they might be in the same situation as us where the skills we've got aren't the skills that our children are interested in. Well, I, I can volunteer something. My dad actually was a High Court judge um, and a barrister. And if you want to reach out to me at the end of the session on LinkedIn, um, I'm sure I'm going to get floods of people interested in law. Um, <laughs> but, but often, and, and maybe to highlight the point, many people won't follow up. So, you know, I'm more than happy if you send me a LinkedIn request or speak to invest in and get my details, I'll happily um, set up a call. I'm volunteering my dad, you know, <laughs> uh, which I'm sure he, he won't mind. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously if anyone else does also reach out, I can try, but I can't promise uh, with so many people on the call. But, you know, the reason why I would say that is still many people still won't even message me, even though I said that. Um, and so that's why I'm, I'm happy to put that out, but I'm more than happy to help if I can. I think what you've just demonstrated, though, is exactly how networking works, you know, both in the question, um, which is that even though it's not from your background, but the fact that if you go around and talk to your friends, your colleagues, your families and, uh, and everybody else and just sort of say, right, does anyone know anyone who's a lawyer? Um, you know, all of a sudden you'll be surprised on who knows who. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, that is just a perfect <laughs> sort of situation someone asks and James answers it spot on the, the other That's, thing I'd uh, say oh, yeah, go for it, Jenny. Uh, go, Jenny I was first. just gonna say like that you know my I'm I'm you know a network um a network strategist and an entrepreneur and I'm starting a, a tech company my dad was a postman and my mom was a nurse it makes absolutely no odds and I think what the most important thing you can do as parents is set you know be those role models and I think the biggest part of networking is how you teach your children to treat other people and um, networking is nurturing relationships and giving people respect and you, your kids might never need to go to a networking event ever but they will need to work with other people and um, so the best thing you can do is just teach them how to treat people and how to how to be respectful and kind and give people time and you know like Heather just said that story about you know someone might dismiss someone what you want to do is teach your kids never to dismiss anyone and to, when they're the CEO one day that's you know the, the head of the food chain that they'll be the one that gives the startups a, a chance and the interns a chance and um, so you might not feel like you've got networking skills but if you know how to look after relationships and, and you know be kind to people then you've got every skill that you need to be able to teach your kids how to network. The other thing is tangibly have a think, you know, is there anyone from the school that your child's at that alumni have gone into law? Um, also practically, if they are thinking about going to the university, so University of Birmingham, you could contact University of Birmingham saying, look, I'm thinking about going to law and I'd love to speak to someone um, who's already gone into practice following them graduating. And I know they will, they'll put you in touch and it's a great opportunity to start that conversation early and get some maybe younger experience of people that are recently um, there. The only other thing about LinkedIn, I'd say, is be specific if you're reaching out to anyone and give a reason. Say, for example, you saw me on the panel and I offered this. Please, can you be in touch, etc. So it's it's very the the ask is very specific because if you just contact me without anything, I've got 300 waiting in my box that I just I do go through them sometimes and say, look, why are you contacting me? But I try and want to make it as useful as possible. So if if you or your children are reaching out, be you know I saw this, I'm interested in this. Be very specific for the ask, even if it's just. I'm really passionate about this industry and I'd love to interview you or ask you some questions. And, you know, the chances are people want to pay it forward and give back. So, yeah. Thanks for that, everybody. Now, just before we go on to our final question of the night, um, I just want to let you know that we have now launched our feedback poll. Now, as I mentioned to you, we will be taking the next parent event from this feedback poll poll so please do fill it in and tell us what you'd like to see next from Invest In as well as tell us how we did on this event. So for our final question we would like to go back to the audience back to our parents for one final question. So we're going to ask somebody to put their hands up and we're going to go to Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay if you can unmute yourself Um, what date is the summer internship, please? Absolutely. Great question there, Lindsay. Uh, so our summer internships, we actually have two options uh, for most of our careers in July 
and in August. And if you like more information, uh, we can send over an email directly for you. Uh, just send it through on info at investing.org. Thanks for that, Lindsay. So I guess we'll go for one, actually one more question. <laughs> so I can see Annalie is on the top, Annalie Lombard. So Chloe, are we able to unmute Annalie? Perfect. Hi, good evening. Um, it's been really interesting, thank you. Quick question, in the minefield of social media, how can you work out which are the best social media platforms for your child to engage with, depending on the career that they're interested in? What a great question, Annalie. And Mary, I'd actually love to come to you. I think it's a really great question. I think I would consider a lot of the things we've mentioned already on this call. Think mm -hmm. about the way that you learn. So Clubhouse is great if you remember things that you hear. Um, LinkedIn is great if you're a bit more visual. And I think generally for, for me, LinkedIn is probably my top for professional networking, followed by Twitter because of being in kind of professional services. Um, but I definitely think it's worth considering how you learn. There's apps like um, Lunch Club, which is facilitating some of the one-to-one -one networking that Jenny mentioned as well. So I'd really try to understand um, what is the way that your child learns and how can you find a social media that follows that. Um, and definitely, as we've already mentioned on the call, um, thinking around the security concerns and if you want to sit alongside them and just checking in with people before the calls or the networking takes place. Um, but I would also quickly just mention as well, I think there's so much um, your child can do just kind of putting their own name and brand out there. So producing your own content, writing a blog. I always say you don't need to kind of wait for a job to start a career. So what can you do to kind of build that all up so that people come to you and say, oh, you're providing the Gen Z perspective on X topic. Um, I think I'm seeing a lot of young people do that and I love it. Thanks, Mary. Um, does anybody else have any final thoughts on this final question? No, I mean, I'm just straightforward LinkedIn. <laughs> I, I think we Twitter, but I, I don't, I'm not into, uh, one platform for me is absolutely fine. It does, I think there's so many professions on LinkedIn. Um, as you progress, uh, uh, your, when your child progresses, LinkedIn to me is still one of the best ones. But I love Clubhouse, I think it's pretty good. My thing, only thing I'd add to that is, you know, again, go into the industry and ask where they spend their time and what they go, because there might be, and I think we will see more and more of this, the future of like niche networks of mm. platforms and things and clubs um, and kind of closed environments that actually are, are industry specific. So again, I would kind of follow that chain. If you're passionate, interested in something, go and ask those existing people, where do you spend your time? And I often also say, you know, are there any events that you would invite me to? Or is there something so that, you know, that from a paying it forward, say I'm really interested in this industry. If you get invited to anything that, that you can extend the invite to me, I'd love to hear about it. Um, and I, I think that hopefully could, could be really useful as well. Thanks, James. And Jenny, I'd love to hear your final remarks as well. Um, if you've got anything extra to add. Yeah, and that, I, I totally agree with what Mary was saying, especially about, you know, giving young people their own voice and giving them the chance to create their own content. You know, anyone that applies for any job from here on out, the employer's going to Google you. They will get on Google and they'll search for you. So think about what your child, what, what content you would want them to be associated with. So they've got these opportunities now to be, you know, Wix. You can create your own website in 10 minutes. It's free, do blogs, whatever. It gives them a place where they can share their thoughts and interests and passions, whether they're passionate about sustainability or, you know, equal rights, or feminism, anything. They've got these, you know, these free places where they can go and share their ideas and thoughts and, um, create this online portfolio of content so that by the time it comes to applying for internships they've got somewhere that they can send the employer and say look this is an insight into to me as a as an individual and um, because a lot of employers think of culture fit as much as they do about skills so giving your child the opportunity to showcase who they are as a person and what they care about and um, will really help them to find the right fit for the company that yeah, they end up working for as well so yeah spread the spread the spread their thoughts and love across the world wow um i'm almost speechless here by all of the insights that that you all have given um on the panel heather as well with your talk 
on exactly, you know, the psychology of networking, how we can support our, our children right now, and as well to our parents who have been joining us live throughout the past hour and 10 minutes. I realize we've run slightly over, but I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who has joined us today. As we mentioned before, if you have any questions, do please email those in. And of course, fill in that Slido poll so that we can bring you what you want next time. So a massive thank you to our industry executives who are live um, for us and a massive good night or good morning, wherever you're joining from in the world today. It's been great having you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you again. So Bye, much. Everyone. It's been brilliant. Absolutely Bye. loved it.